Um, the next thing that I want to do is uh, actually uh, get the uh, depth of field turned on for this. So on our camera, if we go over to the Redshift camera tab slash depth of field or down to the depth of field settings here and say enable depth of field, um, nothing's going to happen at first. And uh, that's because the renderer needs to be restarted in order for depth of field to take effect. Now, by default, what this is using is the Houdini camera focus slash f-stop. So I've restarted my render here. And in order to adjust the how shallow the depth of field is, we would need to actually do that over here on the sampling setting here. So you can see the focus distance is set to 3.3, f-stop set to 5.6. If I bring the f-stop down to 1 or something like that, you can start to see the depth of field showing up in our scene. And if I get really extreme with it and take it to 0.1, you can see we're getting like a super um, shallow depth of field uh, like so. So let me bring this back up to something uh, like 0.5 where it's a little bit obvious but not too terribly obvious. And then we can kind of play around with how to uh, set the focus distance of our uh, camera. So there is the hard way of um, setting the focus distance, which can be sliding this slider around, which is just not very easy to do, especially when you're in the macro level like this. Um, so that's the most painful way to kind of set your focus distance, I think. Um, the second most painful way is to actually do it using the handles, I think. So I'm going to just pop out of this view real quick. And if your view kind of falls off like this, like what mine did, even though I have my view locked to camera two, just come back here and select, uh, you know, pivot back and forth between camera two and auto or something like that, it will eventually um, come back. And then you can move around your scene and it won't um, kind of update this view down here. So the other way that you can select your uh, your focus distance is actually using the handle itself here. So um, you can actually grab this and set it to, you know, if you say you want to focus on, you know, maybe something uh, like this, this front strand uh, tendril right here, you can see that we're kind of uh, focusing on, well, it looks like, yeah, we're focusing on this one right here. So that's one way to do it. Uh, if you really want to just kind of um, snap it to the surface of an object, you can actually uh, enable snapping. So if I just bring this down a little bit and select this um, magnet icon with a little ball next to it, that snaps to point. So I can actually grab this um, and boom, have it snap onto an object like so. But you see that I actually just changed my view when I did that as well. So I'm just going to undo that uh, because I don't really want to change my view. If I have my camera all locked down, I don't really want to mess around with that. So there's another type of handle that we can use that is called the focus handle. So if we right click on our handle here on, on this little purple square inside of our camera and we select our focus handle, we have these little controls here that uh, will allow us to uh, pick our focal plane. So there's a little arrow in the back, a little square in the middle. It's kind of hard to see. There's a little arrow in the back, a little square in the middle, and a little arrow in the front. And this kind of uh, determines where our focus region actually is. So what you can see is if I grab this, if I, I'm just going to disable the magnet right now, uh, the uh, snapping, the point snapping right now. If I drag this around, you can see I'm adjusting the focus distance over here if you look at this parameter. That's being adjusted by sliding that middle square. And then I'm actually adjusting the f-stop by dragging these arrows. You can see that I'm widening out that f-stop and bringing it in for super shallow depth of field by just adjusting those. And so um, if I did want to, say, focus on this strand right here, what I could do is actually turn on snapping and then grab the middle, uh, the little box in the middle. And with this box selected, now that I have snapping turned on, I can go over to that strand and this focus distance is snapping to the end of this strand. And if I really bring that uh, depth of field in super shallow, oh, you got to be careful because see now what it's trying to do is it's trying to snap my depth of field handle to uh, this geometry behind it. And that is making my f-stop be 0.0001. So we don't want that. I'm just going to turn the snapping off and grab this little thing. And I can make my depth of field super shallow, but you'll see that this uh, one strand is still in focus. I'm just going to go back here and set my f-stop back to something like 0.5 or maybe 0.25. Oops, 0.25. And um, then we can go over my favorite way of setting focus, which is the easiest way of setting focus, and that's doing it from the uh, view down here. 
So if say my focus distance is a little bit off, we'll just set it to a value of one or something like that and increase the F stop to, uh, let's say 0.6. So I can at least kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, maybe I'll bring focus distance back, uh, back a little bit further just so I can have some, uh, view of my geo. So yeah, if I got my geo here and it's out of focus, I like using this. If you're familiar with Redshift in another package, uh, you just, this little icon here with the, uh, it's like a dot with a little, uh, dotted square around it. The click to focus, um, button. I love it. Just click that thing and you click on the strand you want to focus on or the area of the image that you want to focus on. And it will dynamically update your focus distance based off of the first, um, piece of geo that the ray hits when you, uh, when it ray casts your mouse into the render view. So that's my favorite way of setting the, uh, depth of field, uh, focus distance. If you are a fan of the old school way of doing the uh, uh, focusing in Redshift, uh, we can uh, uh, check this out over here on the Redshift camera tab. So if we go back over to the Redshift camera tab, you can see that uh, we have this use Houdini camera focus f-stop. This is the default, and that basically is saying it's going to look at um, this. I think that Redshift has started implementing that as its sort of default behavior in a lot of apps is to use the you know, built-in focus f-stop features that come with whatever application, 3D application. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you can enable the legacy technique. So let's untick use Houdini camera focus f-stop. You can see that things get all weird. And then our focus distance here is now being derived. And then we get a circle of confusion radius, etc. Now, I believe that we can still, um, you know, pick our focus distance from within this window. Yeah, we can still pick our focus distance uh, like so, but you have access to the circle of confusion radius and power and all that kind of stuff if you want to adjust that there. I'm not going to do that for this uh, lesson or this course or whatever, but that is where that um, feature is if you want it. I'm just going to turn this back to use Houdini camera focus and f-stop. And then down here, if you want to add a bokeh image, you can uh, do that here. You say use bokeh image and you can navigate to your favorite uh, bokeh image. I don't have any on hand right now, but you can go through this file browser and find whatever type of bokeh image file you want to load in there. And that's how you can get uh, bokeh working in your scenes.